In this lecture, I will talk about special types of graphs that appear in some applications. The first one is the notion of complete graph. A graph is complete if every two nodes in it are connected by an edge. And we usually talk about complete graph of a given size, where the size is measured in terms of the number of nodes. So K sub N denotes the complete graph that has N nodes. So if I talk about, for example, K sub 3, then I have this graph. This is the complete graph on three nodes. So this is K sub 3. If I talk about K sub 5, the five nodes that are connected, we have connection between every two nodes there. This is K sub 5. Okay, so the complete graph is just a graph that is very dense. Every two nodes in it are connected by an edge. Cycle, as the name indicates, is when you have a set of nodes, n nodes, that are connected in such a way that they form a cycle. When you draw it, it looks like a cycle. So we have something like this. Sorry. So this is C5. It's a cycle that has five nodes in it. If I want to have C3, it's this. If I want to have C4, it's a cycle that has four nodes like this. Notice that n has to be greater than or equal to 3. We don't define cycles for one or two nodes. Very powerful type of graphs that are used to represent many, many types of problems like in the area of matching and scheduling. Like, for example, I want to match classes to classrooms. I want to match students to groups. I want to match... Uh, flights to cities by for an airline. I want to match uh, groups of people for clubs and so on. These are all modeled in terms of bipartite graphs. So a graph is bipartite. An undirected graph is bipartite. If you can split or partition the set of nodes into two sets, let's call them the set on the left and the set on the right, such that every edge, every edge in the graph has to connect nodes in the left and the right. No edge should connect two nodes on the left side. No edge should connect nodes on the right side. So for example, the following is a bipartite graph. This is a bipartite graph because if you look at this is V1 and this is V2, you notice that every edge in this graph connects two nodes, one of which is in V1, one of which is in V2. If I look at this graph, if I look at this graph, 1, 2, 3, 4, is it bipartite? If you look at it like this, it's drawn like this, it looks as if it's not bipartite. But notice that I can actually draw it a slightly differently. So if I put, this is equivalent, this graph is equivalent to, if I was just, when I, it's a matter of drawing, it's equivalent to draw it like this. 1 and 3 on one side and 2 and 4 on the other. And 1 is connected to 2 and 4. 3 is connected to 2 and 4. So once you draw it like this, you will notice that this is bipartite because this is V1, for example, and this is V2. Okay? Now, what happens with a graph like this? So suppose the graph is... The graph has five nodes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, if you look at the graph like this, and you try to draw it in such a way that it looks bipartite, or you try to divide the set of nodes into two sets, V1 and V2, such that every edge connects a node in V1 to a node in V2, you will fail. This graph is not bipartite, no matter how you draw it and how you look at V1 and V2. And there is a powerful theorem that allows us to check that this is really not bipartite. The theorem says that a graph is bipartite if and only if there is a function or a mapping or a coloring. Think about it that we want to color the nodes of the graph with two colors. Let's call them one and two or red and green, such that no two neighboring nodes, no two adjacent nodes have the same color. Okay, so let's look again at the graph that was bipartite so that I drew like this. And th think about it that I want to color each one of these nodes in color number one or color number two such that I don't want any two neighboring nodes to, be, to have the same color. Can I do that? Okay, let's start with this node and color it with, with one. With, if this is one, its neighbors have to be colored two. Okay, these neighbors have to be colored two. Well, the neighbor of two have to be colored one. And I have no problem. So now I, I was able to color every node of this graph 
in one of two colors 1 and 2, such that no two neighboring nodes have the same color. Let's look at the graph that that's not bipartite and see how it's going to fail. Let's label them as A, B, C, D, E. And let me start arbitrarily wherever I want. Let me start by, by coloring node C with color 1. If C is colored by color 1, since B and D are its neighbors, B and D have to be colored with 2, right? Because we don't want the neighbors to have the same color as C. Well, if B is colored with 2 and A is a neighbor of B, A must be colored 1. If D is colored 2 and E is a neighbor of, of D, the E must be colored 1. But now look at this problem or conflict that, that we have. Now we have A and E, our neighbors, and they got both of them received the same color. And this theorem tells me that since I couldn't color it with 1 and 2 in such a way that no two neighboring nodes have the same color, this is not a bipartite graph. So this theorem is very powerful because I can use it as an algorithm for testing whether a graph is bipartite. I can now think about it as, can I just color the nodes of the graph 1 and 2 such that no two adjacent nodes are, have the same color? That's basically the algorithm for testing if a graph is bipartite or not. Okay? And one other type is the complete bipartite graph. In this case, that we have the nodes on the left and the nodes on the right, but it has to be complete in the sense that every node on the left has to be connected to every node on the right. So this is a complete bipartite graph. Okay, And usually we denote this by K32. So if we have the K32 denotes by denotes a complete bipartite graph that has a set of three nodes and a set of two nodes and all the edges between these three and two nodes. The last thing I want to talk about in terms of special types of graphs is trees and forests. A graph is a forest if a graph G is forest if it is acyclic. Okay, so a graph is acyclic, it doesn't have a cycle. Okay, there is no cycle in it. So here is here is a graph that is a forest. So this is a forest here. Okay. Here is a graph that is a forest. It has four nodes and no edges. This is a forest as well. Here is a graph. Also, that is a forest. It has seven nodes and it has no cycles in it. This is a forest. This graph, of course, is not a forest, not a forest because it has a cycle. Okay, it has this cycle here. A tree is a, is a forest, but also it has to be connected. So if I look at these ones here, if you look at these forests, which ones of them is also connected that there's a path from every node to every other node? So this forest here is connected. There is a path from every node to every node. So this is also a tree. If you look at this one here, this is not connected. We have, it's a forest, but the nodes are not connected to each other. There is no path from every node to every other node. So this is not a tree. This one here is a forest. It is not a tree because we have two disconnected parts or two connected components in it here. So this is not a tree. Okay. So a tree is a connected and acyclic graph. A forest is just that it is acyclic. It doesn't have to be connected. So a bunch of disconnected subgraph, each of which is a tree, is a forest. So a forest is a collection of trees. This is why the name.